Did you know you're the top of the food chain? Huh? Yeah, you know, top dog. <laughs> Numero uno. <laughs> the top of the food chain. Uh-huh. So what's on the bottom? Funny you should ask. Food chains don't start at the top. They begin at the bottom. No, not that bottom. They actually begin here. Sunlight is energy. And energy is what all living things need to survive. So the food chain is how energy moves through nature. Basking in the sun is how plants convert energy into food. And lots of animals eat plants, even you. So when an animal eats some plants, that energy moves from the plant to the animal. Yeah! And when that animal gets eaten by another animal, mm, yummy. the energy moves again. Even a dead animal still passes energy. Dead salmon, anyone? Yeah. Insects, bacteria, and other creepy crawlers, like these maggots, will feed on a fish carcass. Other fish feed on the insects, the bug, and bears will eat those fish, and so on. <laughs> also, how many of you use fertilizer in your garden? Bat poop is the best fertilizer around, <coughs> and it's mostly insect parts. And think about other fertilizer, like cow manure. <laughs> It's really just digested plants. So fertilizers help plants to grow. The plants then convert energy from the sun into food by using photosynthesis. This makes plants producers. The animal that eats the plant is called the consumer. A tree like this that produces acorns is a producer. This squirrel eating the acorn is the primary consumer. But watch out, a secondary consumer like this red tail hawk may eat the squirrel who ate the acorn. Huh? Well, it's kind of like a hamburger. Actually, this is a sloppy joe. OK, who is the secondary consumer? You. The cow ate the grass, and you're eating the cow. Really? But just like you, animals don't always clean up their plates. That's where scavengers come in. Scavengers, like this vulture, are nature's cleanup crew. You could say they clean up the leftovers, taking the energy from dead animals to power themselves. You may have a scavenger in your house. But I don't have a vulture in my house. Well, let's say your mom produces some cookies. Then she would be the producer. If she gave you a plate full of oatmeal raisin cookies. Thanks, mom. You would be the primary consumer. Hey, what do you call these guys steal my cookies? Yeah, well, they would be the secondary consumers. And don't forget Fido. See, you do have a scavenger in the house. Nom, 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 nom. What we've just shown is a simple food chain. But think about all the food chains going on all the time around you. Take something pretty common like a spider. This one is eating a grasshopper. But how many other animals want to eat the spider? Birds, other spiders, lizards, frogs, or toads, or even mammals like mice or shrew. Then think about what's going to eat each of those animals, even dead animals. This is how food chains interconnect and create a food web. So where do you fit in? At each step, you can be a primary consumer, a secondary consumer, a scavenger, and someday when you're really old and die, you even get to be the producer. It's the web of life. <laughs>